I've noticed that a number of students are still having difficulty in forming graphic models in our labor economics course based upon uh, just looking at two equations, doing some simple calculations, and then allowing the model to, uh, to reveal itself. I've seen students continuing to put together a fairly complex a uh, set of uh, values, a table of values, and then using that table to plot point by point of the different curves. And you can do that, of course. It sometimes is difficult to get the exactly accurate inner, uh, equilibrium values, market clearing values when you do that, but but you can do it. It's much simpler to do it by simply looking at the equations, doing a couple of fairly simple calculations, and then allowing those to reveal the graphic model for us. So what I'd like to do is think about that and spend some time doing that. And then we're going to spend some time looking at the point-slope form uh, just so you can know how this is consistent with what you may have learned in some of your uh, algebra courses. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and think about a linear model. A linear model in this positive-positive space and recall that as we're looking here at our graph, I'm looking simply at this in positive, positive space. So anything coming out this way is positive, both in the labor axis and in the wage axis. And wage axis is Y, of course, the labor axis is L. So when we look at the two equations, we'll think about the labor supply at first. This is a simply an upward sloping equation where we have some labor supply equal to negative 10 plus 3w, and we know that it's going to yield an upward slope on a straight line because there is no exponent. There, there aren't even any fractions in here expressly. So this is just going to be a straight line, in which case, as long as you've got two points on that straight line, you've got everything you need to know about the line. Similar with uh, labor demand, we've just got a straight line. And in this case, labor uh, demand, we have a, a scalar in front of the w, ax, w value, w variable of 1, and a scalar in front of the supply uh, equations, uh, w variable of 3. Those inform us something of the slope, of course. Uh, we would have to actually convert these to a point slope form to see the exact slope. But what you're seeing is the labor supply equation is going to yield a positive or an upward sloping curve. It's going to be somewhere in space like this, labor supply. And labor demand is going to be somewhere negatively sloped like this. But this isn't nearly specific enough. Uh, you're going to be able to, by the time we're done here, know exactly where the labor demand curve intersects these axes and where the labor supply curve intersects various axes. And you're going to be able to give me that information as well as equilibrium information and give me values for each of these points I'm putting a little line next to. So, so we can really do most everything that needs to be done here. One of the things I want to stress for you is that when putting together these graphic models in this labor economics course, it is not necessary that they be perfectly proportionately accurate. What I mean by that is I expect the labor demand curve to be downward sloping as our labor demand curve is here. And I expect that it's going to intercept the wage axis and it's going to intercept the labor axis. And I would like to see some semblance of proportionality if it intercepted the wage axis at, uh, let's say, 20, and I and intercepted the uh, labor axis at 100, I would expect there to be some relationship between the height of 20 and the length of 100, but only in very general terms, just in very, very broad, illustrative terms. It does not need to be exactly proportionately accurate. So keep that in mind as you're working on these. So let's, let's think about how we're going to do this. I'm first going to use the equations to find a point in the field. I'm then going to use the equations to find uh, axes points. So a point in the field would be anything in the field here. Uh, this point right here where they cross each other, that clearly is a point in the field. And then axes points are values for the points, oh, excuse me, values for the points that we have anywhere on the axes. So, so we're going to do those two steps first, and then we'll think about what that means to us beyond that.
So let's think about this. I have these two equations. Well, I know, just as we saw here, that they are going to cross at some point, and at the point that they cross, the labor supply is going to equal labor demand at some given wage. So let me see if I can start to find that. So I'm going to set labor supply equal to labor demand, so negative 10 plus 3w is equal to 20 minus w. Well, to, to go ahead and solve for w, I'm going to add w to both sides of the equation, so I've got 4w on this side, and I have 0w over here, and then I'm going to add 10 to both sides of the equation. So I have 30 on the right side, and now I have zero uh, constants on the left side. So if that, so now I want to go ahead and isolate W. So that lets me then say W is equal to 30 divided by 4. So I've just divided both sides of the equation by 4, which I believe W then is going to be equal to 7.5, and that is actually W star. That's the market clearing, that's the equilibrium level of wage. Well, if I know that, I've got this point here where they're both the same. Then labor supply and labor demand give me the same relationships. I can take this W and I can put it into either one of these equations. Demand or supply doesn't make any difference in order to find my L or L star. So let me do that. I'm going to say L star is going to equal, and I'll take the labor demand equation here, 20 minus W, or 20 minus 7.5, which I believe is going to give me 12.5. So I can think about that, and I can think, okay, so somewhere along this wage axis, I'm going to find a value of 7.5. Let's say for the moment that it might have been here. And somewhere on this labor axis, I'm going to find a value of 12 and a half. Let's say that it's there. So that would be my W star at 7.5 and my L star at 12.5. And if I have that, then I have a point in the field right there. Now, that's the only thing I know about that point at the moment. Oh, I can surmise a few things. I mean, I know labor demand goes through that. I know labor supply goes through that point. But I don't know yet where they're starting from. I don't, and they, they don't stop, by the way. Uh, they, they continue to pass through uh, the, this entire uh, Cartesian coordinate that we've got here. But I've identified a point within my, my model now. So let me go ahead and, and do a little bit more. Let me identify points on the axes. Well, to do that, I'm going to use those exact same equations. And we'll start with labor demand because it's, it's the easier of them. So I know that when W is equal to zero, that I can find some point on the labor axis. So when W is equal to zero, so here I'm on the W axis, I'm equal to zero. Well, what's the value of, of W? Zero. So I'm going to have some value of L. How do I find that? I can say, okay, labor demand when W, let me get rid of this. So I'm using labor demand when W equals zero, labor demand equals 20 minus zero, whoops, 20 minus zero, which simply equals 20. And when labor demand is equal to zero, then I have 0 equals 20 minus W, or again, W is equal to 20. Now, it's only coincidental that uh, we have the same value on each axis, and that's simply because of the way that I structured this. So, okay, that's for our labor demand. Now let's think about labor supply. Labor supply, I know when W is equal to 0, I've got labor supply equal to negative 10, plus 3 times 0, or it simply equals negative 10. So in this case, when w is equal to 0, so we're fully at 0 here, but we're on this axis, apparently we're somewhere back here at a negative 10. We're on this axis. If we're on the labor axis, wage is equal to 0. If we're on the wage axis, labor is equal to 0. Think about it, because we've got this 0 point here. 
So now if I'm going to say that labor supply is equal to zero, that means zero is equal to negative 10 plus 3w, or 3w is equal to 10, w is equal to 3 and a third. Okay, so now I have a value for the labor demand relationship. I have a value of labor uh, demand being equal to 20 and wage being equal to 20. So let me just think about those. So let's say I've got 20 and similarly I've got 20. So I now have a line I can draw between those and that's my labor demand curve. And then for labor supply, I know I've got a value of negative 10, that's back here somewhere, and 3 and a third. Well, I'm going to assume that 3 and a third is right about here, Let's say 3 and 1 third. Well, I know a couple of other values. I know them from the values we created a few moments ago. We said that W star from our equilibrium was 7 and 1 half, and L star was 12 and 1 half. Okay, so if this is 20, and if this is 3 and a third, I'm going to venture that 7 and a half is probably about here. And if I've got, so I'll call that W star equals 7 and 1 half. And then if I have the ability to move this over directly to that axis, or to the labor demand curve, and down here I've got then this at L star being 12 and a half. I know that my labor supply curve is going to cross the wage axis at three and a third. I just calculated that. Yeah, I know it crosses the L axis somewhere back here at negative, t negative 10. I don't really like working in negative values, although you clearly can. I prefer positive values. But if I know that labor supply comes through this point and this point, I know labor supply is here. Now it's also back here somewhere. I know this continues on back here. So it's it's crossing back here at about negative 10. I am less concerned about what's happening here in negative space. I'm, I'm very interested in what happens in positive space. So what I've just done is I've gone ahead and I've created a reasonable facsimile of my model by setting my equations equal to one another to end up with the W star and L star values, setting in turn each of my variables equal to zero in the labor demand equation, and then setting each of my variables equal to zero in the labor supply equation. And in so doing, it revealed for me values of labor demand and labor supply as across these axes. I've gone ahead and used some very crude leader lines here to connect the values, my equilibrium value here in the field, to some value on the axis. You need to do that. And hopefully your leader lines will look a little bit better than mine. These are intended to be dotted lines. Your handwriting is probably a lot better than mine. I've seen a number of students uh, that are having struggles with this maybe use various uh, graphic or graphing software to come up with these, but then they have a hard time getting the right labels on these. And so that gives us a little bit of heartburn. But I've gone ahead and created then this, uh, this linear model, and I've completed the model. Okay, so let's move on and let's think about uh, point slope form for just a minute. So you'll recall from, uh, from algebra that the point slope form is y equals m of x plus b. Well, we're starting then from the standpoint of y rather than the equations that we use for labor supply and demand. If you look at it, they, stand, they start from the standpoint of x because L 
whether it's labor supply or labor demand, is on the x-axis. So in order to think about this strictly as a point slope form so that we can get a real slope the way you might be used to thinking about it, we've got to rearrange these equations. Let me do so with labor supply and then again labor demand, and then we'll talk about them briefly. So if I want to rearrange the labor supply equation and normalize it on the W or Y axis value, I'm going to solve for W. So, okay, how do I do that? Well, if I have LS equals negative 10 plus 3W, that's the same thing as 3W equals LS plus 10. Because all I did here was I then added 10 to each side of the equation, and I turned the equation around. Now I want to divide the equation by 3 so I can isolate W. W equals one-third LS plus 10. Well, this looks like Y equals M of X plus B. B being some constant, M being a slope variable in front of the X uh, value. So how do I think about this? Well, okay, so I've got um, one-third of LS and so that's going to end up on my axis here somewhere. And I've got, uh, and I've got, or rather, I've got 10. It's going to end up, uh, 10 divided by 3, excuse me, uh, is going to end up on my axis here somewhere. Well, 10 divided by 3 is about 3 and a third. It's not about that. It's exactly that. And I now know that if I have a slope of 1 third for every for every three units of run, I have one unit of rise. So let's say that here is four and one third. And this M of X, this one third, is rise over run. And run is along the L axis rise is along the w axis and if it was negative it would be still be rise but it would be a negative rise or a negative run okay well in this case one third so one over three for every one that i move up i'm i move out by three and so that's a point that i can think of and that's a labor supply equation it's labor supply well i can do the same thing with labor demand let me do that I'm going to go ahead and rewrite it uh, to approximate the, the point slope form. I'm going to say that W is equal to 20 plus LD or equal to LD plus 20. Well, what is the scalar in front of labor demand? It's 1. So that means that W equals 1 labor plus 20. So what's the slope? The slope's going to be uh, 1, but it's, it, it really it needs to be negative. Excuse me. I should have uh, made that a negative. I apologize. So I went ahead and moved um, W over to this side. I moved LD over to this side. That, that meant that I could change the sign of W, I could change the sign of LD, I kept the sign of the constant, constant. So once again, we have Y, or W, equals M of X, 1 of LD, plus 20, B. So what's, what's this look like then? Well, and again, this is a negative LD, excuse me. It's negative LD, well, I've got rise over run, so I've got, for every 1, I've got, one. Well, I'm going to start. Where do I start with this? Uh, well, just like with um, uh, with the uh, labor supply curve, I'm going to start at this intercept, which in this case is 20 on the wage axis. So I knew that was up here. And for every rise or fall, rather, of 1, I'm going to come over 1. So if this was 1 here, and I'm going to end up with, then, slope like that, negative slope of, of 1. And that then lets me, once again, think about my values for W star 
and L star, it doesn't exactly calculate them for me. I would have to set these two equations equal to one another to get the values, and I've already done that, 7 and 1 half, and 12 and 1 half. So without putting together a table of values, and then plotting point by point by point by point, which can be very accurate, but is also very tedious to get the exact values for W star and L star, because you would have to then plot a half a point at a time, so lots of different points here, to get all of these exactly right. And then you'd simply be lucky to have gotten this, because you have half values for either of them. Uh, you maybe didn't know that. You may have lucked out there uh, to do this. I've been able to just use a couple of equations and work this out without having to do that point by point by point. And yes, this may not be perfectly proportionally accurate, but for our purposes in a linear model, this is more than good enough. Anyway, I hope this helps a little bit. Uh, if you still have some confusion on this, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, you know you can do so by email, uh, by Canvas, uh, as well as by text. Thanks.